Okay, let's try this again. I'm going to show you how to scan um, film negatives. I'm going to launch the Silverfast scanner. It's a really nice program. And we've got it hooked up to an Epson scanner here. It's a um, Epson V700 Perfection uh, photo scanner. I don't need this window, so I'll close that. And But I do need this window right here, so I'll leave that on screen. And I need this window, right? and I don't really need this window. Okay, I'll close that. And we're going to do our settings. Now, first of all, these are going to be negatives. So um, look over here. Don't worry about what's over here. Uh, scan mode, normal file, original transparency, two choices, transparency if it's negative or a transparency, right? Or reflective if it's a print. If it's a print, we're going to do reflective. If it's negative, we do transparency. And then I like to scan both as a positive, and I will turn it into, um, I will invert the image from a negative to a positive in Photoshop. So I'm going to leave it as positive. Then on the frame tab, I'm going to change it. Uh, normal is 48 to 24 bit color. That's normal. But I'm working with black and white photography here. So I'm going to change it to 16 to 8 bit grayscale. And then the other big issue is um, your dots per inch, your resolution. Well, if this is going to be a little um, 35 millimeter um, negative, then I'm going to need to, I'm going to blow this up to an 8 by 10. I'm going to need this to be, shoot, almost, you know, 800 percent size. So if 300 is good photo quality for um, a print, and I have a little tiny thumbnail, you know, uh, film negative, then I need to do eight times this. So really, if I want to do an 8 by 10, I need to take this up to about 2,400 dots per inch. But since, for the sake of argument, you know, 2,400 dots per inch, but just for this lesson, they'll go a little quicker if I just scan it at 1,200 dots per inch. So I'll do that now. All right, so I've got my frame set grayscale here, scan type, 16 to 8-bit grayscale, 1200 dpi, and I got everything set, time to pre-scan. So I'll do a pre-scan here, and this takes a little bit of time, hopefully won't take too long here. If it's the first time you've used the scanner, it takes a while to warm up. I have had to redo this video twice. Okay, there's my pre-scan, all right? And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab by the edge of these little marching ants the selection box, and I'm going to drag my selection box over and adjust it, adjust the size for my negative. Working with film here, right? I've got a film negative of some trees in Yellowstone. Okay, so now I'm ready to go. Okay, that looks good. All right, I've got that set. Now what I want to do is, now that I have that set up, I can also grab this histogram here. Here's the button for the histogram. Click that, and let me get this dialog box in the recording window. And this is the, um, this is an, uh, huh, how do I say this? This is a allegory for the pixels in my image. All right, so if the left is black and the right is white, and then these are all my pixels in my image. You can see that in my negative, I have no pure white. So the pixels, this mountain of graph, this graph of my image, doesn't have any white pixels. It also doesn't have any pure black pixels. So you can see that most of it's here in the darker gray region by being here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag my black marker over to the pixels. So now my darkest pixel in my image will be approximately black, right? And then I'll drag this other uh, triangle, the white triangle marker, and I'll drag that over my image. So now my whitest part of my pixels, remember the black mountain or graph represents my actual image pixels, the pixels in my image. So now at the whitest point, I will actually have a white. And you can see here on the image how it changed. So I'm setting the histogram right off the bat. Click OK and then hit scan. And now it's going to ask me where do I want to save it. I'm going to save it to the desktop. Uh, untitled one TIFF. I'll just say, okay, trees.tiff. And a TIFF, the tagged image file format, is a good format because it's a lossless compression, which means um, none of the information is lost um, when you save the file as opposed to a JPEG. Every time you resave a JPEG, a little bit of the um, image is um, 
lost or generalized. It's a lossy compression algorithm, JPEG. But TIFF is lossless, so you're not going to lose any of your information when you save it. Okay. All right. And okay, that's it. So now, what I want to do is, let's see here, this is going to open up probably on me. What I'm going to do is, I'll look down here, there it is, trees.tiff, and what I want to do is I want to open it in Photoshop. So I want to right click on it, open with, and I want to open it up with Adobe Photoshop CS4. On, on the computer in the uh, lab, just drag your TIFF file right onto the Adobe icon, and it'll open up right in Photoshop. Okay, and here it is. Hopefully Photoshop's opening up right now. And when it opens up, I'm going to show you some basic maneuvers to um, work with your photo in, oh, there it is. I'll just do it now. Okay, so there is Photoshop. All right, here are the basic maneuvers for your image. Okay, I'm going to change this to 20% here. Or zoom in. I want to zoom in here. I'll get my zoom tool. There we go. I right, zoom in a little bit here. First thing I want to do is I get my selection tool is rotate my image. So I'm going to go to image, image rotation, and this time I'm going to do 180 degrees, and also 90 degrees clockwise and counterclockwise. 180 degrees. All right, now I need to get my uh, crop tool. Here's the crop tool, and I'm just going to drag a selection box. Oh, I can't control it. So what I need to do is cancel this crop. Uh, how do I? Where's my cancel? I'm not seeing the cancel. I'll go back to my selection tool. Crop the image. Don't crop. Okay. With my crop tool, I need to reset it. So right here at the top here on the crop tool, clear. Okay. Crop tool, clear. And now I can drag my selection box around my image. Okay. And if it's snapping. If you find that it's snapping, what you can do is you can go to um, View and turn off Snap, and then you won't have that snapping problem when it snaps to the edge. I hate that. Okay. Well, sometimes I, I like it. When you're good to go and you've got the crop set where you want it, just hit Enter on your keyboard, and now it crops. Okay. So now I'm good. Uh, now, last thing, but last but not least, Image Adjustments invert. So I'll invert my image and there it is. All right? Pretty nice. Um, I can also now do another levels adjustment, image adjust levels, and I can play with my image and see how much more white I might want and how much more black. If I want more black, I can also play change my mid-range, my mid-grays by um, messing with the gray slider, the midpoint slider, seeing if I can get that to a place that I like. But I'm pretty happy with that image right now. It's kind of nice. I'm enjoying that. It's a little bit on the dark side, but that's pretty good. When you're done, hit File Save. If you need to save it as a JPEG to upload, what you probably want to do is do a File Save As, and I'll change it to Trees, and then I'll dash JPEG and I'll change the format to a JPEG. Okay. And hit save. And then set the quality of my JPEG here. And baseline optimized. And click OK and that saves that. You're all set.